In this lesson, we're going to add some code so when the player moves to a location, it will check to see if there's a quest there. If there is, it, then we'll check to see if the player has the items needed to complete the quest. And if they do, we'll give the player all of the rewards and have them complete the quest. The first thing we need to do is modify the player class in the engine project and in the models folder. And we're going to add two new functions. One that will check to see if the player has all the items needed to complete a quest, and then another one to remove all those items from the player's inventory, which will also raise a property change notification so the UI knows that we've taken items out of the player's inventory. The first function I've added is the remove item from inventory function on lines 100 through 105. This takes a game item as a parameter it removes it from the player's inventory, and then it raises the on property changed for the weapons property. Just in case we removed a weapon from the player's inventory, we need to notify the UI just like we do when we add items to the inventory. And the second function added is the has all these items function from lines 107 to 118. Here we're going to pass in a list of item quantity objects so it will have the item ID and the quantity needed. Then we're going to look through each of the items in the passed in parameter, and we're going to look at the player's inventory and count how many items they have in their inventory where the item ID matches. If the count is less than the count needed from the passed in parameter, we're going to return false because the player does not have enough items. For instance, let's say that we want to check if the player has five snake skins to complete a quest and we count and there's only three of them. Three is less than five. So we'll, we're going to return false. If we get through all the items in the list and we haven't returned false for any of them, that means the player has enough items. So we're going to return true. They do have all these items. Now that we have everything changed for the player class, we need to go into the game session class in engine view models. Before we add in the code to complete the quest, I want to make a quick change to the function give player quest at location. This is an old one we created that actually gives the player the quest when they move to the location. When we wrote this, we didn't have the raise message for the text box. So I've just added a bunch of raise messages in here to let the player know they received the quest name and then show the quest description list all the items they need to return with to complete the quest, and then list the rewards that they're going to get for the quest. Now to start the code for actually completing the quest, we're going to go up to line 34, the current location setter. We have, we had some existing code in here where when the player moved to a new location, we would give the player the quest at the location and we would check to see if there was a monster at the location. Now on line 34, we've got a call to a new function, complete quests at location. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to call this function, see if there's any quests the player can complete, and if so, take care of that. This complete quests at location function is a new one that we're adding, and it starts at line 130 in the source code that I'll have on the support page. What we do is we're going to say for each quest, in the current location quests available here. So if you move to the location and if it doesn't have any quest, this doesn't need to go through the loop. So it just finishes. If the current location does have any quest, we're going to look at each one of them and we're going to check the player's quests and get the first one where the quest ID matches and is not completed. So if the player has the quest, but it's already completed, this is going to return default because there's no new quest for the player to complete. It's an old one that has been completed. If we have a quest, so if the player's got a quest in their current quest list and it's not completed, then quest to complete is not going to be null, which is what we're checking on 138. This is where we actually start looking to see if the player has all of the items. And if so, we're going to complete the quest. On line 140, we call the new has all these items function that we just added to the player class. And we're going to pass in the quest items to complete. So if the quest needs five snake skins and two snake teeth, 
We'll check to see if the player has all those. If the player does have all the items, then we're going to run the code from 142 down through 170 to actually complete the quest. The first thing we're going to do is remove the quest completion items from the player's inventory, and that's the code from 143 through 149. We'll look at each item quantity in the items to complete. So again, let's say there's five snake skin and two snake fangs to complete a quest. We'll get the first one, the five snake skins. Then we're going to do this for loop from 145 through 148, and this will run five times because we're doing it for the item quantity quantity. Then we'll call current player remove item from inventory, and we're going to get the first item from the player's inventory where the item type ID matches the item type ID. So we're going to look and find the first snakeskin item and we'll remove that from the player's inventory. Then we'll go through the loop again for the second time and we'll remove the first available snakeskin item from the player's inventory. We'll do that five times to delete the five items from the player's inventory. Then in, in this example, if we had, uh, if we also had two snake fangs, that would be our next item quantity. We'd loop through this for loop at 145 through 148 twice, pulling off the first available snake fang object in the player's inventory. And this will get all of the quest completion items out of the player's inventory. Then on 151, we start with a blank line to give some space on the screen. Then we tell the player you completed the quest. We add the quest reward experience points to the player's experience points and raise a message for that. We add the quest reward gold to the player's gold and raise a message for that. And then for each item in the quest reward items, we'll call the item factory, create a new game item with that ID. And that's the new reward item. We'll add that reward item to the player's inventory and we'll raise a message saying you received a whatever the reward item is. And then finally on 170, we're going to set the quest to complete, the one that the player had all the items to complete. We're going to set its is completed property to true. So just to give a quick overview again, when the player moves to a new location, we'll call the complete quest at location. That will see if there's any quest available there. It will see if the player has an incomplete version of that quest in their current quest list. If so, we're going to check to see if the player has all the items to complete the quest. And if all that's true, then we're going to remove those quest completion items and complete the quest for the player, give them their rewards. Now that we have all the changes in, let's run the program and see if it actually works. I'll fight a few snakes here. And I'm probably going to die a few times. Okay, there. We had uh, five snake fangs, which is what we needed to complete this quest. So when we move to the herbalist hut location, we see the message is here that we completed the quest. We received 25 experience points, 10 gold, and a rusty sword. And if we look in our inventory, there's our rusty sword. So it looks like this is all working. That's it for this lesson. In the next one, we're going to start working on creating a vendor so the player can sell some of their excess inventory and maybe buy some new items. If you have any questions or comments or want to see the source code, I'll have a link below the video to the support page. It will have all the source code there if you want to just copy and paste this in. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment there or on this video, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.